Hello friends, how are you doing today? So real quick, one of the most common questions I get from couples uh, at real estate meetups or events that we're speaking at is, you know, how did you and Olivia start, right? You have been, you know, side by side together through this entire 15, 16 year journey. You've talked about lots of your ups and your downs. You know, how did you two stay on the same page, right? How, you know, both at the beginning, right? Before we made that first investment, how did we stay together when that first investment blew up and was extremely painful? How did we stay on board when we started having some success and money started to exceed bills and we, did, we didn't get crazy? So I, you know, I get that a lot. So I went ahead and created a top 10. I did review this with Olivia, so her input is on this. Uh, someday we're going to get her on a video, uh, but I keep asking and keep, she keeps saying, no, that's your thing, but uh, maybe someday. Uh, but I did run these by her, uh, so she does, it does have her stamp. And uh, we will share this via a, uh, a PowerPoint because there is 10. I just thought 10 was a nice round number. All right, so 10 keys for working or investing with your significant other, both at the beginning, before you own anything, during, right, when bad things happen, and then a as you exit together. So the first one is you must talk and be on the same page day one. Being on the same page day one is important, you, and you can't force anything. What I mean by that is it typically happens where one or the other member is more engaged. They're, they've got that sugar high. They're really passionate. They're reading and consuming all kinds of information. And then the other party uh, is just not there yet. And uh, sometimes there's friction, right? Like, why aren't you coming along? Why aren't you with me? Why aren't you supporting me? You know, what's going on? Um, and the reality is, is sometimes you need to step back and just have a conversation and talk. Uh, and, and you'll see several different iterations coming back to this, making sure you're on the same page uh, at the beginning and during and, and near the end as well. So um, again, make sure you're talking before you made any offers. Uh, share what's being learned. Um, understand risks and concerns. And again, don't force anything. Don't just go out and say, hey, I tried. I'm going to go write an offer without out him or her and they'll just get on board at some time later. That's not a great strategy. I could promise you if your first investment goes that way and it blows up like our first investment did where the first tenant got a divorce, never paid rent again, did $15,000 in damages after spending two or three months rent free because we had to evict. Um, if that would happen on your first investment and you forced it, uh, that would be bad, right? Bad things would happen in your relationship and it would be tough to recover. It was only because we were on board together and we had talked for well over a year uh, getting ready for this that we knew that bad things could happen. Uh, it was very unfortunate that it had happened to that degree in our first investment. Uh, but again, uh, we were on the same page. We, we, we took it on the chin and we kept moving forward. So that's number one. What, you know, one of the real keys here is you must respect that people learn differently, right? And in my relationship, uh, I learned uh, back in the day, right, 15, 20 years ago by reading. Uh, you know, I filled up a bookcase and then some uh, with all kinds of different reading material. Part of that was because I had so many airplane flights and needed something to, to kill the time. Uh, well, Olivia, right, she learns by, by doing, right, getting, looking at property, walking property, going to meetups, going to events on the weekend right? And, and it's just different, right? I don't know that Olivia has actually ever read a real estate book. Um, I actually have to ask her. I know she's opened a few, but I don't know that she's finished any. And it's okay, right? People learn differently. And we are able to talk and share and ask questions and research stuff. So just realize that just because you're consuming a book a week doesn't mean that your significant other will. And sometimes, you know, uh, and, and all the time, that's okay. Uh, and sometimes, you know, you just need to go a little slower. Right? Maybe someone need, maybe you need to review what a concern is before they kind of get on board and, and really go for it together. I think it's important, if not critical, that you attend events, you know, meetups together, free or paid. Right? You can read by yourself. You can consume YouTube videos by yourself. You can be in your office doing all that research. But if you're going to go spend a couple of hours on a Thursday night at a meetup, Take the other individual with you. Um, let them socialize in the circles. Let them see the energy. Let them see uh, the questions. Come prepared. 
right? Ask, get ready to ask some questions, introduce people, you know, what you're doing, what you're researching. Uh, and if you're paying to go to an event, you know, pay the, usually it's, you know, I bring, it's an extra whatever it is to bring your significant other, bring them, right? Uh, one of the best things we did is we went to events together, meetups, and we learned together and we, it just, it was great. We made a whole uh, afternoon of them or evening of them. We would go to dinner together. We would do the event. We'd talk the whole way home. And it was just so valuable to be uh, on one page together. So, you know, have I gone to events by myself? Yes. Uh, do I recommend it? No. Um, you know, just sometimes life events happen and you both aren't free that evening. Uh, but make sure they are, uh, that significant other is invited. Uh, in worst case, if they're not, Make sure you take time, you know, later that day or the next day, depending on when you get home, to really summarize what you what you learned uh, and the connection you've made. Meetups and events are important, and um, you know, if you could do them together, all the better. One of the things that really worked for us during our 15-year journey of full-time jobs, raising a family, was segregation of duty. Um, in reality, Olivia was the operations manager, you know, chief bookkeeper, CFO, whatever you want to call it. She ran our business day to day. She was working with the property manager, running and approving bills, doing our books, making sure they weren't ripping us off. No money was lost, following up on evictions and late pays. And she was, she was doing a lot of the busy work uh, where I was simply focused on finding deals or securing capital, right? I was either trying to earn the biggest commission checks I could or create relationships with other investors who might want to invest with us. So we had very clear uh, lineation of duties. We couldn't have done it without her. Uh, the portfolio would have blown up because I just didn't have any more time uh, to run the books. Uh, and she's the one that helped us really understand when a property manager wasn't performing and really called the shots that, hey, we need to fire another one. Um, so having that clear line of separation was critical to our success. One thing we did, uh, this was probably after year two or year three when the market was getting hotter and hotter, is we established veto power, right? Since I was in charge of bringing the deals and securing capital, uh, I gave Olivia unquestionable veto power. And she used it a couple of times. And I, you know, we talked about it and I, I had to accept it, right? We veto power was, nope, I don't like that deal for whatever reason right? Don't like the street, don't like the condition, don't like the terms, whatever it was uh, that she didn't like, right? What I had to trust her spidey senses. When you're the one out there chasing the deal and you haven't done one in a while, sometimes you get sloppy and you, you rush to get one. So one of the most powerful things we did was establish veto power. Um, and again, only in my relationship, because I was finding the deals, it was given to Olivia. In many other situations, you know, the husband would have the veto power if the, if the wife is finding the deals and doing those things. Just, just realize if you're the one finding the deals, give the veto power to your other party. They, they can use it. They need to explain themselves. It can't be, hey, it's a, it's a blue house, right? It needs to be logical. Uh, and then just accept it and move on and, 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 you know, realize and appreciate that they made a tough call. And uh, I could say both times that Olivia used it, she used it uh, quite well. And um, I'm sure they were the right decisions for us. You got to talk frequently. You know, what have you researched? What have you learned? One of the most often mistakes I see in relationships when it comes to real estate investing, again, one party is more excited than the other. The one that is excited tries to talk to the other party and they get shot down or ignored or told to shut up or whatever it is. And then that excited party stops sharing. That is absolutely a mistake. What you need to do is be consistent and you need to show that you are learning more and more and getting better and better and, and you're no longer a novice, right? When you start out, it's like you're in kindergarten. Then you get to you know, first grade and second grade and pretty soon you're getting into high school. So share with your significant other and continually share. If it's not every day, at least every other day, what you're learning, what you saw, what kind of deals you're seeing, what kind of terms you saw. Um, what kind of prices are out there? You need to consistently, consistently communicate with your significant other. You are in this together. Um, you know, this, this is important in, in your relationship. If you don't continually communicate uh, about this, it will turn toxic um, because either you'll resent them or they'll resent you. 
And uh, no matter what happens in real estate investing, it's, it's not worth that. One, here's a big one. Uh, never assume silence is approval. Um, I've had this question in various forms and various meetups over the years where I talk about our first experience and how important it was for Olivia and I to be on the same page. And somebody from the audience will spit out and say, hey, my husband or my wife um, doesn't get it, but they said go for it or they, 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 you know, they're not approving or disapproving. And I just stop them. I say, hey, you know, if you're assuming silence is tacit approval and you're just willing to take it and move forward, I wish them luck because most of the time that just is recipe for a disaster because what will happen is, you know, like in our situation, if I would have moved forward with silence uh, as approval and that first tenant would have been evicted and then had to spend an extra 15 grand that we didn't budget for, um, that would have been our last investment. We would have had to list it for sale, lost a lot of money, been a frustrated landlord and, and not gotten to our ultimate goals. Uh, so realize that that's, don't assume silence is approval. Get actual approval, right? I, yes, I'm 100% on board. Go for it, right? I don't, uh, I don't appreciate silence, uh, and silence is not an approval. Here's a big one. Bad news does not get better with time. Share it and share it early, right? Again, real estate investing has very few promises. One is if you hold for the long term, conservatively financed, you're going to be better financially. The other one is bad things going to happen. Stuff's going to break. People are not going to do what they say. Somebody's going to steal from you. So when that happens, take it on the chin, share, talk about lessons learned, how you can avoid it next time. But don't just hope it slips through the cracks and, oh, by the way, you'll take five grand from this other account and cover it up and they never have to know. Um, again, real estate investing, bad stuff happens. It should be communicated up front. And when you have one, share it, share it quickly, deal with it, learn from it, uh, and move on together. It's just about staying hand in hand and moving forward. And this is something that uh, uh, Olivia and I have been great at over the years. Right? Again, she ran the book. She was the operations leader, CFO. She would call me when I'm in a different country or we're, we're talking at night and she'd say, hey, what'd you find? And I'd say, hey, I saw this or that house. And then she would turn over and say, hey, this person needs to be evicted. They're seven days late. They promised to show up today. It didn't come. We need to evict them. Hey, we got this bid uh, to paint the outside of the house. What do you think? So again, you just share, 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 right? Bad news doesn't get better with time. So make sure everybody feels like they're on the same page. Also celebrate your successes together, whether that's a new acquisition, a cash flow milestone, full occupancy, you know, whatever it is for you, Share those successes together. Go to dinner. Take some selfies. Document the heck out of them. Um, do, what, do what couples do and, and celebrate those successes because they're so meaningful that you'll cherish them forever. And if you can give a little touch tone like a selfie or a, a bottle of wine or something that remembers the event, uh, you'll, you'll just cherish those for years to come. A big one is, you know, when I talked about the first one, talking up front, making sure you're on the same page, make sure you have joint goals. And maybe one of you has a goal of, you know, $1,000 a month and the other one's 5,000. I don't know. But make sure they're layered, right? Maybe one of you comes in with $1,000. Great. That can be a goal. Then the other one wants 5,000. Great. That can just be a bigger goal. So make sure what you both want, make sure your goals are listed together. They're tracked. Uh, hopefully you've seen by now on this channel, I report my goals every month and I share them with you. Uh, so again, understand and respect that you both have goals. It shouldn't be one-sided. You are absolutely in this together. Uh, and again, uh, make sure uh, they're documented and you're tracking them and you're talking about them all the time. So that's my 10. Let me know what you think. If you want, go back and watch them. Maybe I should have numbered them. I didn't, but that's okay. Let me know which one you thought was your best. Let me know if I've missed anything. If you're investing, running a business with your significant other and you have a great uh, tidbit, leave it in the comments so others see it. Uh, and always please subscribe and share these videos. That would be greatly appreciated. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, re, uh, Olivia and I have been doing this very successfully for 16, maybe 17 years now. Uh, we've been on the same page since day one. I'm, I'm very proud of that fact. And um, 
I couldn't do it without her. I'm, I'm so blessed to be with her. And uh, I hope you feel the same way with your significant other. So have fun. Keep talking. Keep those goals going. And let me know what you think. Hit the subscribe, like, comment. Have a great day.